What's up, everybody? Welcome to System Crafters. I'm David Wilson, and today I'm going to try to make a case for why you should try GNU Geeks this year. I'm going to give you five compelling reasons to try to convince you to give it a shot. So first of all, what is GNU Geeks? Uh, Geeks is a package manager and system configuration tool which enables you to safely and repeatably install software and an entire GNU Linux environment on your computer. Uh, to be more specific, it's a functional package manager, which is inspired by Nix and Nix OS, if you've heard of those before. Uh, Geeks is directly inspired by a lot of the internal model of how Nix works, so a lot of the same concepts still apply. And it can make trans transactional changes to your system configuration. Uh, its functional model ensures that any configuration that you apply will always have the same result uh, when, a, when given a particular set of inputs. So as long as you have the same uh, configuration file that you've created and the same uh, version of whatever channels you've pulled in, like the main Geeks repository and whatever packages it has, if you have the same inputs at any, any point in time and you try to re regenerate that configuration, you're going to get the same output, which is very important for making a particular configuration repeatable on one machine or even multiple machines. And also every change that you make to your system can be rolled back to a previous configuration if something goes wrong. Whenever you apply a configuration with Geeks to your computer, it's basically regenerating all of the configuration files and all the programs uh, from scratch into a new uh, derivation or profile. And that profile is unique to that configuration, but the previous profiles still exist. So you can roll back to your previous version if you need to, if anything goes wrong, which is super powerful. Uh, one interesting aspect of GNU Geeks for the Lisp enthusiasts out there is that the entire tool is written and configured with the Guile scheme language. So you can almost think of this as the Emacs of Linux distributions. So if you've ever spent any time hacking on an Emacs configuration, which you probably have if you spend any time on this channel, um, then you know that Lisp can be a very convenient language for uh, expressing, you know, elegant configurations and also defining your own constructs to sort of make that process streamlined. And you can do the same thing with Guile Scheme. You can, you know, define your own macros, your own syntax for the language, and you can also just sort of pull together all the components you need. It's all real code and you can write it as if it's, you know, application code basically. So it's, it's a pretty cool feature in my opinion. That's a, one thing that I really like a lot about it. So in this video, I'm going to just demonstrate a few uh, of Geek's interesting features using a virtual machine. And if you'd like to follow along, you can find instructions on how to set up a standard Geek's VM image in the Geek's manual. I've got a link here and you can find this document that I'm reading right now uh, in the show notes of this video description. So if you go there and click the link, you can see this, this exact thing and then follow the links as well. Uh, if you want to get started quickly on a Linux system, if you're already running Linux and you have QEMU installed, which is an emulation platform, uh, you might be able to run these commands. You just use wget to pull down the qcal2 image for the Geeks Live VM and then just run it with uh, QEMU system uh, x86-64 with a, a certain set of parameters here that uh, you can just copy and paste basically. And you'll end up with a VM which basically looks like this. You just go into this XFC environment and then you can just open up the terminal and try out the same commands that I'm going to run right now. So reason number one for why you should consider trying GNU Geeks, you'll never lose your configuration again. So in other GNU Linux distributions, you install your system and then you manually make changes to the configuration to do things like installing packages, adding user accounts, uh, tweaking configuration files like inside of your slash etc folder or other places on your file system, uh, configuring system services. So using usually using your, um, your like system D or some other type of uh, service manager to start services and enable them so they run on startup. Uh, and also setting up your user configuration like your dot files or any programs that you would, you use as a normal user of your system. So GNU Geeks allows you to describe your entire system configuration using a declarative syntax, which means that when you look at a configuration file, for the most part, it's going to look like a description of what your system should be in the final state. Uh, this enables you to manage your whole configuration using a single file of code, basically a single scheme file, and then check it into source control so that you never lose it. So the most important thing here is, is the combination of source control plus the thing I said before, which is if you have the same set of inputs and you run it through GNU Geeks to apply configuration to your computer, you should get the same result every time. So if you're checking in your whole system configuration, the source files for that, into a Git repository, then at any point you can roll back to a previous version of your code for your configuration and then apply that same configuration to your computer again. Uh, this does require that you save the 
uh, channel configuration for all of the sources of packages and configurations for your geek system at the same time so that you, that you can get the exact same versions of everything. But that's something that I'll show you in the various videos of the uh, Crafter System with GNU Geek series. So uh, something you'll learn how to do. Uh, typically, the process is to start with a configuration file that's generated from Geek's own graphical installer. I call it graphical in quotation marks because it's actually a, like an in-curses terminal app. Um, or maybe a configuration file that you found online. You then use that to install your system and then you tweak it to your liking. And then you want to try to check in any changes you make to your configuration file to a Git repository where you push to GitHub, GitLab, SourceHut, wherever you want. And uh, whenever you want to install or update your system, it's basically the same command. You just use uh, the geek system command and tell it to reconfigure using your .scm file for your full configuration. And then that will apply the config that you've written to your system and um, we will use whatever channel configuration that you give it. There's a little bit of extra stuff you have to do to use a specific channel config, which we'll talk about in other videos, but uh, this is the basic command that you need to use. And also keep in mind that you need to use sudo for this as well, because you need to be root level or super user access to uh, apply a system configuration. Um, you can always find the current system config at this uh, run slash current dash system slash configuration dot SEM file path. But I do recommend keeping your own copy of your system config that you check in a source control like I mentioned before. So like for whatever reason, if you ever happen to lose your configuration file, you can always find it at that file location. And it's kind of useful because on this Geeks VM, we don't have the actual configuration file because it's been generated for us. So we can find the config that was made for this VM at that file location. So let's actually try changing the system configuration of this VM that I have set up. And uh, what we're going to do is try to add a new user account to the config. Um, so what we'll do first is just verify that uh, this user does not exist. So uh, the system already comes with a username guest, but I'm going to add a new user named David. But right now, I'm just going to go check and see if there already is a username David on the system. So we're going to look at the, uh, the home directory. There's only guest there. We're going to cat, et cetera, password, and then grep for David. And uh, nothing is there. But if we grep for guest, guest does show up. So we, we can tell for sure that there's only one or there only one configured user account on this system that we can see so far. So <clears throat> now what we're going to do is go make an edit to uh, the configuration file. Uh, I'm going to copy that config that I uh, mentioned before. I keep hitting caps lock because of the way my key bindings are set up. Uh, copy run slash current system slash configuration. I'm just going to copy it to config.scm here in this folder. I'm going to install uh, vim just for the sake of speed um, so we can edit this because vi does come with this machine, but vi is kind of a pain to work with. So uh, let's just skip that whole problem. Hopefully this won't take but just a second. But uh, when, once we get vim installed, then we're going to open up that file and make an edit to it. So we're going to say vim config.scm. Uh, I'm going to jump down to the uh, user configuration part here, right in this section. And then I'm going to copy the um, the whole user account right here. Uh, it's telling me I'm changing a read-only file. Uh, I think I can fix that. Let's see. I'm going to try to save it really quickly. Okay. Yeah, I think it saved it. I'm going to make it writable, config.scm. We're going to go back into Vim. Okay. So we uh, basically cloned that user account. Uh, and uh, create a user named David, or at least I'm saying I need another user named David. So the system will have two users now. Uh, one little thing we need to do to this syntax to make it work correctly is we need to change this cons to a cons star so that we can have multiple um, accounts be listed here, basically. Uh, but uh, that should allow me to have two user accounts and then this list of base user accounts, which is like the system level uh, user accounts. So what I'll do now is just verify that I didn't miss any pr uh, parentheses. I'll save this file and then we can run sudo geeks uh, system reconfigure config.scm. Now, this may actually take a little bit of time, so I might have to make a cut in the video. Uh, but the, the goal here is that whenever I run this, um, it's going to apply that configuration, the new full configuration file, which might, maybe we'll take a little bit more of a look at it in a second. Um, and then uh, we will have that new user account actually be created and we can see it in the etc et password file and the fact that the home folder did get created so we're going to wait for a second for that to to work uh, and in the meantime i'm just quickly going to describe some things in this config file so um uh, your one thing that you will do often in scheme files you're going to uh, load modules you're going to pull modules in 
to your configuration. Since this is actually code, you're going to use the actual module system for Guile scheme to do this. So a lot of the things in GNU Geeks are package definitions, which are defined in modules or uh, even service definitions. So lots of things like that. Everything's basically a module inside of a uh, Guile scheme. And then uh, if I don't delete anything, whoops. I think uh, I've got caps lock set again. Anyway, um, there's this operating system. This is where the, the, the declarative configuration comes in. We were defining an operating system in this file. We're setting a lot of things like the host name, uh, the time zone, the locale, keyboard layout. Uh, we're configuring our bootloader. We're configuring our file systems. Um, then we're back to that user configuration, like I mentioned before. Uh, the set of packages that you might want to install on the system is another thing that you can put. Uh, you can actually change this to set whatever packages you want. And then configuring your system services. So everything that you want to configure about your system um, is at the level of this configuration file in code, which is pretty nice. So let's see about where this uh, reconfigure is. Uh, it's still installing a bunch of things, so we're probably going to make a little cut right here and then jump ahead to the point where the configuration is finally applied. Then we can verify that what we did actually did work. Okay, now the uh, system reconfigured that we just ran has now completed. It took a few minutes because I have already sort of pulled the latest version of packages, and now I've had to reconfigure my entire system using the latest versions of things, so it downloaded a lot of packages, basically. Uh, but for you, maybe if you haven't run Geeks Pull yet, it won't be so long. So what we want to do now is verify whether that new user, David, got added like we asked for in the configuration file. So let's just take a look at the home folder. Now we see that there is a home David folder, and it should actually have some files in it to start with. Uh, permission denied. Let's just use sudo for that. Um, so we've got a basic uh, home folder set up, and we can also cat that, etc. password. And then uh, grep for David there, and the account is actually there. So uh, we were able to add a new user just by changing the code. So we don't use any like add user or, or any com commands like that to do this. We actually edit a configuration file that could be checked in the source control so that anytime you reapply that configuration, either on the same system or on a new system, you're going to get that same user with the same exact configuration. So now you don't have to remember what groups your user needs to be in to get access to certain kinds of things. You can just write it once, check it in the source control, and then you never have to think about it again, so, which is pretty awesome in my opinion. So uh, Geeks enables you to truly craft a system configuration that will last, even if you have to reinstall your system. Uh, like if something goes horribly wrong and you have to reinstall, you can use the same configuration. You don't have to remember how you set things up in the past. You don't have to remember which files you edited in the et cetera folder. Everything is encoded in your configuration file. And then if you move the config configuration to a different computer, like if you have to use like a new laptop or maybe you want to use the same configuration on multiple machines, all you have to do is just change anything that is system specific, like the uh, drives being used or any hardware that you need to set up drivers for. And then you can use basically the same configuration on all of them, which is awesome. It's one of the things I do that I enjoy a lot is have the same configuration on multiple laptops so that I have the same tools, the same workflow everywhere, and it's very easy to apply that. And like I mentioned here, you can even share the same base configuration between multiple machines uh, with custom tweaks for each each. So uh, let's see. All right, number two, reason number two, changing your configuration is safe. So if you've used distributions like Arch, Gen 2, or even Ubuntu, you've probably experienced some kind of system breaking upgrade at some point. So you go install some new packages, or maybe run the full system upgrade to a newer version of the OS, and uh, something goes wrong. The existing files you had in your computer cause some conflict, and then none of your programs work, or maybe you can't even boot your system anymore. Whenever those things happen, it's a hair pulling moment and you have to go dig around and figure out exactly what happened so you can get your system working again. Uh, very stressful. So with Geeks, no matter whether you're tweaking some part of your configuration or just installing new versions of packages, you can always roll back to the previous state, which makes it very safe to try new things or at least just upgrade to new versions of software. Uh, the other thing that uh, I didn't write down here, but bears mentioning is, uh, Geeks operates on more of a sort of rolling release model, bleeding edge model. So if you run Geeks pull, you're going to get the latest versions of all the packages that have been updated in the uh, Geeks package repository. So when, when you use a rolling release model uh, distro like Arch or Gentoo or others, uh, you have that risk of upgrading a package and having it break your system. But with Geeks, you don't have to worry about that because you can always roll back. So uh, to prove this, let's actually try to roll back that user addition that we just added. So we added a new user to the system, but if we run this uh, geeks system rollback command, we should be able to undo what we just did. So let's jump back over to the VM 
I'm gonna run uh, sudo geeks system roll dash back. And it's actually quite fast. It should just take a second to um, reapply the previous configuration. And um, it, it almost just takes the old files and puts them back where they were. So it still keeps around that old configuration. There's a, a place called the GNU store on your hard drive where all these files still exist. It's just creating symbolic links to the older new versions of them into your actual root directory. So all I had to do was just move some stuff around and now we can check the uh, password file and we can see that the David user is no longer there if you can actually see the bottom of the screen. Um, now the home folder does not get deleted because you probably wouldn't want it to delete the home folder for a user. Uh, if I can do LSAL, you'll see that it's still got the same files. Um, but at least the user is not active on the system anymore and cannot log in anymore. And if I had done anything like added a new package to the system, added a new system service in that same uh, configuration change, that rollback command would have just undone all that stuff. So if you do something that causes programs to break, you can always just roll back that way. Uh, another important thing is that um, if you install something that causes your system to not boot anymore, uh, whenever you boot into your machine, you see the grub uh, bootloader menu, you can actually go into an entry for the previous system configurations and load a previous configuration at boot time. So that maybe if you did a kernel upgrade or something like that, um, you can get to the previous version and then go fix your system. So you always have the ability to get to a previous working version of the system, even if you can't boot anymore, which is really awesome. Um, reason number three, you can also use it for managing your dot files. Uh, so last year, an important new feature called Geeks Home was added, which enables you to apply the same declarative configuration style, including rollbacks like we just talked about, to your user level configuration. So this actually makes it possible to ensure that all your favorite programs are installed and configured, configured exactly how you want, no matter which machine that you use them on. Uh, you can even configure user level services with it. So um, a lot of times, you know, whenever using a Linux system, you want to install some service that's running in the background, you have to do it as a system level service. Well, with Geeks, you can actually have user level services for, for things like SyncThing or maybe uh, cron jobs or things that you want to run in your user account and not have to actually set it on the entire system level. So uh, Geeks Home makes it fairly easy to configure those things as well. So we're going to try this out. Um, <clears throat> I have a, a test configuration file that we're going to apply. Uh, what it's going to do is install Emacs and SyncThing. It's going to configure the bash profile to add some extra environment variables to it. Then it's going to set up SyncThing as a user level Shepard service. Shepard is like the GNU service manager. Uh, Geeks does not have systemd, doesn't have uh, any of the other init systems. It has Shepard, which is a scheme based init system, which is pretty cool. So we're going to run the following commands to apply the uh, configuration to the guest accounts home directory. Uh, I'm going to use wget to pull down a pre-made configuration that I already put together uh, to save us some time. Uh, you can do the same thing too if you want to. <clears throat> so uh, we're going to jump over to the machine again. We're going to use wget if it's, if it's not yelling at us. wget, uh, let me pull up my notes really quickly. Uh, let's see, https <clears throat> 0x0.st slash ozve.scm, we're going to write that out to home.scm. So now we have this home.scm file here in our home folder. Now I'm going to run geeks home reconfigure home.scm and note that I am not using sudo here uh, because we are making changes to the users folder. So we don't need sudo. We don't need root level access. Everything can be done as the user themselves. So I will start running this now. It may, act, may actually take a little bit of time to set this up because it's gonna download packages and then um, configure the services and whatnot. So um, we'll come back to it in just a second whenever everything is finished installing. Okay, that actually happened a lot faster than I expected it to this time. Um, so what we're gonna do is just uh, check a couple things to make sure that uh, what we installed is actually there. I'm gonna run Emacs, uh, whoops, Emacs-V to see, up oh, Emacs command not found. Ah, that's the reason why, because um, when you use this for the first time, it's going to set up your bash profile and you actually need to log in to bash again for everything to show up. Uh, I'm just going to take a shortcut by using bash, whoops, bash dash L to create a new login shell. Um, let's ignore that for now. Emacs dash V. Okay, so at least it started up Emacs. We know the Emacs is actually here now. I'm not sure what this uh, locale error is. I have seen this before, but it's only happened to me on this VM. So it's maybe something I'm doing wrong with in the configuration. 
Um, okay, so the next thing I want to do is check out my bash profile. So let's check out the bash underscore profile file. And we can see that there's a couple environment variables that we added here. Um, so while we're looking at that, let me show you what's in the home.scm file so you know what we're looking for. So first of all, we have this home environment. So we're, we're declaratively defining home environment. We're saying the packages that we want to install are Emacs and sync thing. And we're setting up our user level services. One of them, which isn't actually a service that runs in the background, but Geeks has this concept of service, which is basically something that can apply configuration to your, your system in addition to starting services if necessary. So we are using the bash service type, and we're saying that for our bash configuration, we want to add a couple of environment variables. So we don't have to actually edit any bash uh, profile code. We just use scheme code to define which environment variables we want to apply to our bash profile. And then lastly, we say that we want to run a simple service uh, for a shepherd service type. And then we're going to uh, give it our my sync thing service, which I've actually defined here. This is just a variable we're defining in scheme that has a shepherd service object inside of it, which uh, describes how to start and stop the sync thing process. So it's not very complicated to actually set these things up. So if we go back to uh, the other shell, you can see we do have those two um, visual and editor environment variables here. And also if I use the herd command, a herd is the uh, it's almost like the systemd command for systemd, uh, shepherd has the herd command. So if I say herd status sync thing, it will tell us that uh, sync thing is starting, running value is 9060, blah, blah, blah. Basically, that sync thing is actually running. And uh, in the previous terminal, you could probably see some some spew from sync thing. I don't know why it's writing out to, to this TTY, but uh, we can tell that the configuration that we just apply with Geeks Home actually is working. So whenever you start using Geeks Home, uh, you'll want to put a lot more stuff in there. And um, it does require some knowledge about geeks. And I'm going to go far into depth on this in uh, more videos on this channel this year. So if you're interested in using Geeks Home, I'll try to go really in depth to explain how you can learn to craft your own configuration, your user level configuration using Geeks Home. So I think that's everything for this. Oh, one last thing I want to mention, which I, I failed to mention before I ran those commands. Um, geeks Home actually was released or merged into Geeks after the current stable release of 1.3.0. So the, the VM that you probably downloaded to try all this on is actually Geeks 1.3, but Geeks Home is newer than that. So before you can have this command work for you inside of that VM, you're gonna need to run the Geeks pull command. Geeks pull will update Geeks itself and every other, um, be, well, it, it updates Geeks to have the latest version of the command itself and everything that goes along with it. It also updates your channels, but that's a topic for another video. Um, so once you finish running Geeks Pool, which may take some time because I has to pull down a lot of stuff from uh, the uh, substitute servers, uh, you can run hash Geeks, which will make that new version of Geeks available at the shell, and then you can run Geeks Home, and that will be available. So like I said, it may take a while for that Geeks Pool to complete, so you have to be a little bit patient, but after you do that, you can actually run Geeks Home and try this out for yourself. Reason number four, you can easily create isolated development environments. So if you're a software developer, you've probably had to work with a variety of different projects, uh, all with their own platforms and tools and different versions of the same libraries that, you know, like maybe you have two projects and you have different version of, versions of libraries. And this can, can quickly become a nightmare if you have to install all these things directly on your system. So a lot of people will resort to using VMs or Docker or something like that for uh, having isolation between various projects. Well, Geeks provides a command called Geeks Shell, which you can use to easily create an on-demand isolated shell environment for work on your projects without having to use any kind of virtualization. It just uses the, the uh, abilities of you know the shell environment to create isolation, do all this, and also how Geeks can create separate profiles. So if you create a Geeks manifest file named manifest.scm or geeks.scm in your project folder, you can run the following command to create such an isolated environment. Just you run geeks shell or more specifically geeks shell dash dash pure. Uh, the dash dash pure actually makes it so that any previously set environment variables are not inherited by the new shell. So everything's just a clean slate basically. So um, it's going to let you know if you need to mark the project as safe for creating an environment. So like the first time you try to run it for a particular folder, it's going to ask you to uh, set up a file somewhere, but it gives you the exact code you, or the exact command line you need to to set that up. So just copy what it says and, and uh, it will be able to run the next time you, you set it up. So 
Let's use Geek Shell to set up a development environment for the project that I'm building on my other YouTube channel called Flux Harmonic. It's a project called Flux Compose. So we're going to go into <clears throat> the VM again, and I'm going to clone the repository for this, and we're progressively going to get this environment set up so we can build it. So first of all, uh, I'm going to install Geeks. Sorry, I'm going to install Git. Geeks install Git. Um, this may take just a moment. We'll see what it does. Um, but when we get get installed, I'll be able to um, clone that repository and then take the next step. So now git clone HTTPS github.com flux harmonic slash flux dash compose. So now we've cloned that and let's go into the folder. So we've got some stuff here. So um, this project is using CMake currently for building the code. So let me just try to run CMake and see if it's actually there. CMake. Okay, so CMake is not found. So we don't have CMake or any other development tools like Make or GCC, nothing like that installed on the system. So what we're gonna do now is run geeks shell dash dash pure. And the reason why this is gonna work is because we have this manifest.scm file here. So uh, geeks shell dash dash pure. So like I mentioned, it's gonna give me this thing to say, uh, to allow automatic loading of the manifest file, echo this thing into the folder. The only reason why it's doing this is because I'm not specifying the manifest directly. You can actually use um, the, I think it's dash M, dash M manifest.scm to do the same thing. So now it's gonna install all the packages in this manifest. And while it's installing them, I'll give you a, a quick look at what those are. Vim uh, flux compose slash manifest to SEM. So we have things like core utils, which are basically like the core utilities for, you know, a, a shell environment, which you actually do need if you use the dash dash pure option. Uh, GC toolchain, make package config, uh, GDB, CMake, uh, Guile, uh, and everything else that this project needs. So now I'm going to let this install. And then once it's finished, we can move forward with trying to uh, use the development environment. Okay, now we have our shell set up and you can actually tell because it's got this env here at the end of the shell prompt. So I'm gonna run a couple commands to set everything up so that we can build using CMake now. I'm gonna run this bootstrap command, which is sort of just something that's part of this project. And now CMake's already been run by this bootstrap script. We can see that uh, right here, CMake actually is here because I ran CMake and the, uh, the, the help came up. And I can run uh, make-c build and then it's able to build everything for this project. So now we've been able to clone this project and build it successfully without having to know at all what the dependencies are for this project, what build tools are needed or anything like that. Geek Shell is able to create its own isolated environment uh, just so that we can build this one project. And if I ever go out of this environment, like let's say I, I type exit and I go back to my normal shell, if I type in CMake or Make or GCC, none of those are there now because they only existed inside of that environment. I can just as easily get back into that environment by running Geek Shell again. And it's basically instant whenever you run that environment again, because it remembers the environment that you created the last time. So it's a very, very uh, powerful tool for setting up these isolated environments. And you can do as many as you want for as many different projects as you want, so long as you just use it like the way I just showed you. Uh, last thing I'll mention with that one all also is that this feature is also newer than the Geeks 1.3.0 VM that you've probably downloaded for the purpose of checking out these demos. So you'll need to run Geeks Poll beforehand. But if you already ran Geeks Poll in the previous uh, slide about Geeks Home, then you don't have to do it again. You can just uh, use it right now. OK, so the final reason why you might want to try GNU Geeks this year is that you can get many of these same benefits on your current Linux distribution. So you don't actually need to install the full Geeks system on your computer to benefit from Geeks and a lot of the things I just showed you. You can actually install the Geeks Package Manager on pretty much any other Linux distribution, um, either from the package manager of the distribution, like Debian actually has Geeks in, in their package repo, uh, or by using the installation script that you can find uh, on the uh, Geeks manual website. And if you click this link for installation script, it will take you right to it. So this actually enables you to use Geeks to install software, manage your dot files with Geeks Home, uh, create isolated development environments with Geeks Shell, and even create installation media for Geeks system while still using your existing Linux distribution. So it's a really good way to try experimenting with Geeks to get comfortable with it before you actually try to install it as your full uh, Linux distribution. Uh, I actually made a video about this that you can check out to uh, have more details about how to set this up. Then I have a few other videos you can look at to uh, learn how to, to use Geeks in practice. So I definitely recommend doing this if you want a another way to try this out and actually benefit from it in the short term uh, before you make the jump to using Geeks as your full distribution. 
So how to get started. So last year I made a number of videos showing how to get started with Geeks. Uh, the first one was an introduction to GNU Geeks where I sort of explained Geeks and uh, sort of the ideas behind it. Um, another is installing Geeks as a complete GNU Linux system. So if you really want to go all the way and install Geeks on your hardware, uh, there's some things you need to know and it's not straightforward at first, but I've si simplified the process as a result of making that video. So it should be a lot easier for you to try it if you actually want to do that. Uh, also, everyday package management with GNU Geeks. If you want to know how to manage software that you've installed and also do things like roll back versions of software or that kind of thing, you definitely want to check that video out. Using package channels in GNU Geeks, that's a very powerful concept in Geeks, this whole idea of package channels, because it allows you to add other sources to pull software from, which you will need to do probably if you're going to use uh, Geeks as your day-to-day -day, uh, Linux distribution. So very important information there as well about how to use uh, Geeks day-to-day. And then uh, the installing the GNU Geeks package manager video, which I mentioned in the previous slide, basically where you can install it on your existing Linux distribution um, and try it out a little bit. And then lastly, you could definitely check out the GNU Geeks reference manual. It's pretty long. It's got a lot of information in it. Um, that's what I had to use whenever I learned how to set up Geeks. So it's, it's definitely a good resource if you want to learn more about how to use Geeks. Also, uh, this year I'm going to make a lot more videos about GNU Geeks to help with uh, your day-to-day -day usage and also going deeper into how you can write your own customizations and package definitions. So we're going to learn a lot about how Geeks actually works internally and how to write code to customize it further. Uh, first of all, I want to make a video that's a crash course on Guile schemes. So if you're going to be writing Geeks configurations or going a little bit further than just very basic stuff, you're going to have to know a little bit about Guile to be functional there. So we're going to talk, talk about that. Uh, also, some kind of video about like, I installed Geeks, now what? So after you get Geeks installed, uh, you kind of need to know what else you'll, you're going to need to do. Like if you have a laptop, how do you set up the backlight controls for brightness on the screen? Or how do you set up you know various different programs you might want to run or system services or that sort of thing. So I want to do some more videos about how to set up certain aspects of the system once you finally get it installed. Also, uh, writing and updating Geeks package definitions. Uh, Geeks does not have every program under the sun, so at some point you're probably going to have to package a piece of software yourself. So it's good to know how to write package definitions, especially if you want to help contribute to Geeks itself by adding new software to it, which is a very important way that you can contribute. Uh, configuring system services. So if you want to, uh, you know, come up with uh, a like a new service to run, like some piece of software that has a service component and you need to write a service config for that, uh, we'll cover how to do that um, in another video. Uh, managing your user level config with Geeks Home, I think this is going to be a pretty um, interesting and popular area of using Geeks in the future. So we're going to go in depth about how you can write your own home services and do your full dot file configuration with GNU Geeks. And then lastly, developing server configurations and managing them remotely. So um, one thing I would like to do is use Geeks as my server operating system for VMs that I run in the cloud, et cetera. And you can use the same properties of Geeks that we talked about today to manage those and also configure them very easily and have you know a reproducible and reusable configuration across different machines as well. So Geeks is very good for that. So uh, definitely, if you are interested in um, those things, make sure to subscribe. So uh, lastly, I just want to say I want to hear from all of you, um, especially those of you who are finding this channel for the first time. Uh, leave a comment with an answer to one of these questions uh, below or all of them if you want to. Uh, number one, what has kept you from using Geeks before? Um, there could be a number of reasons for that, so I'd really like to know what has stopped you from using it before. Also, if you've tried Geeks, what problems did, did you have, if any? Or if you didn't have any problems, let me know that as well because I would love to hear if people uh, had really good luck with it. And lastly, what's the worst you've ever broken your Linux install with another distribution? So if you use Arch or Gentoo or even Ubuntu, anything like that, what's the worst you've ever broken your system? So don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to be notified whenever I post new Geeks videos this year. It's going to be pretty frequent, I think, because I'm really interested to do more on this topic. And uh, if you want to help out the channel, also like the video below because it helps push the video with the algorithm. So anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that it has gotten you inspired to try out Geeks this year. And uh, until next time, happy hacking. We'll see you.